Hey everybody. So in this video, I am going to go over the PowerPoint in week five on exemplification and evaluation. This is a super important lesson because it teaches you all about how to write an evaluation paragraph, which is what you are assigned this week, writing assignment one, evaluation paragraph. It is the first of your two formal writing assignment paragraphs. You'll do the second one next week. Both of these together are worth 40% of your overall grade. It is so important that you do well on both of these assignments. And part of doing well on them is knowing what type of paragraph you're being asked to write. Remember, the previous lesson we learned about rhetorical patterns and that different rhetorical patterns come with different um, characteristics and expectations. That's what we're going to learn about in this video um, going along with the PowerPoint is what is an evaluation paragraph? What is expected of you when you write one of these? Now, you are given an opportunity to revise your paragraphs, this one and the one next week. You will be given a chance to revise if you are not happy with the score you received the first time around. So. You know, if you don't do as well as you were hoping, there you can raise your score so that your overall grade in the course does not tank because of these two big assignments, right? They are only a paragraph. So, you know, on the one hand, that's good. On the other hand, it's like I really got to get everything right on point to score well on this. And yes, you're given a chance to revise, but wouldn't it be great, wouldn't it be amazing if you could get it right the first time around and not have to worry about going back and making revisions, right? So we're really going to get into this and learn exactly what evaluation writing is and what is expected of you in your evaluation paragraph, okay? Go ahead here and check out the PowerPoint. Okay, so exemplification and evaluation. The only reason that the word exemplification is in the title of this lesson is because that is the name that's used in the book for this chapter, chapter nine, right? Evaluation is what I call it. <laughs> it makes it a little easier to understand. You are evaluating something. But they do go hand in hand, exemplification and evaluation. And we're going to learn how. All right. So in our daily conversations, we often provide examples or explanations for the statements that we make. For example, if I were to say, wow, Walmart was really crowded today. I would then follow that up and say something like, there were at least four cars waiting at each of the checkout counters and it took me 45 minutes to get through a line. I have just provided examples to back up my statement, how Walmart was so crowded today. Or the corduroy shirt I bought is poorly made, All right? When I washed it, the colors began to fade one button cracked and another fell off, a shoulder seam opened and the sleeves shrank almost two inches. I have provided four specific examples to back up the statement I made about my shirt being poorly made, right? That is what exemplification means. It is simply using examples to back up a statement, right? It helps us support the statement, it helps us show that the statement is true, right? So we have to do this when we write paragraphs as well, right? We have to provide examples and explanations so that our reader fully understands the point that we're making. We want lively and specific examples so that the paragraph remains interesting. And we have learned that, you know, providing examples to support a point is one of the key components of paragraph development. It's base two. Remember the 
four bases of writing, coherence or well, unity, support, coherence, sentence skills, support. This type of writing really highlights the use of examples as support, not necessarily like facts and statistics and data and do research, it's examples, right? So um, when we make a point and use examples to support it, that is called exemplification writing. One type of exemplification writing is what we call evaluative writing or writing to evaluate. And that is what we will be focusing on for writing assignment one, evaluation paragraph. Okay. So evaluative writing, what is it? So the purpose of evaluative writing is to demonstrate the overall quality or maybe the lack thereof of a particular product, a particular business, a particular place, a particular service, program. The possibilities are almost endless in terms of what the actual topic could be. But the purpose, regardless of the topic, is to demonstrate the overall quality or the epic failure of that topic. You're trying to convince your reader that your topic is valuable or not valuable, high quality or low quality, enjoyable or not enjoyable, good or bad. You're making a judgment. And think about it. When we have a decision to make, especially in this day and age, um, such as, you know, like what phone to buy, what car to purchase, where to go on vacation, where to send your kids to school, where you want to go out to eat, um, movies, music, it, just the possibilities are endless. Isn't it nice to hear the opinion of a trusted source, right? So if you are thinking about where you want to send your kids to school, you're going to ask other parents who have sent their kids to different schools, and you're going to ask them, okay, what is so good about the school where your children go. What is so good about the school where your children go? Right? When we're looking to make a purchase, we will even sometimes go look at the reviews, right? I know I do when I'm on Amazon, I always read the reviews first, you know, and some of them aren't real great, <laughs> uh, meaning the quality of the review itself doesn't really give me a whole lot of information. Um, love this product, so glad I ordered it. Okay, good for you. That doesn't really help me, um, but yeah, good for you. No, but when I get to the reviews that are like, okay, I liked this element about this product, I liked this element about the product, I liked this third element about the product, you know, and it's giving me thorough explanations that I'm like, okay, this is information that is helpful to me and I can use this to help make my decision. And if it's a bad review, like it says it comes with this, but it doesn't, it says it's, you know, quality, you know, material, but it ripped right away, you know, things like that. Then I'm like, okay, I'm upset that I'm not going to end up buying this one, but I'm very thankful for the thorough explanation of why this product actually sucks, right? So that is evaluative writing. What those people are doing is evaluating a specific item, right? And you can go to Yelp and read reviews of restaurants or salons, um, you know, all different stores, all different kinds of places, you know, and again, sometimes the reviews really aren't that helpful. Sometimes they are very specific with good explanations and they truly can help you make an informed decision, right? So in the case of evaluative writing, you are going to evaluate a specific subject or topic using clearly defined criteria, 
we'll get to what that means here in just a moment. You are going to make a judgment about that topic. And you're going to eventually, at the end, make a recommendation to the reader about your topic. Okay, your judgment, whether it's good or bad, enjoyable, not enjoyable, high quality, low quality, is going to be supported by specific examples of how your topic measures up in your criteria, right? The examples will be based on your personal experience with your topic, right? That it's the use of those examples that make evaluative writing a form of exemplification writing. And really what we're doing is writing a review. That's what an evaluation paragraph essentially is. It is a little bit more formal, but still a review. You're choosing your topic. And you're going to say, this thing is great, or reasons A, B, and C. You're going to give examples of A, B, and C. Or you're going to say, this place is awful because they did this and this and this, and you're gonna explain, right? So it doesn't have to be a good recommendation. Um, it can be a warning, <laughs> it was more, more than a recommendation, but you don't wanna go middle of the road. So keep that in mind. You wanna make sure as we're learning about this and you're thinking about topics that you could possibly use, you want a topic, that you can say, this thing is good and all of your reasons support it, or this thing is bad and all of your reasons support that. You don't wanna go middle of the road, wishy-washy, right? So, all right. At the end of the day, what you're writing for an evaluation paragraph is your opinion, right? Just like everybody on Amazon, everybody on Yelp, even, Famous movie critics, just their opinion, right? Now, you want to dress it up as though it is an expert opinion, right? Yeah, movie critics, it's just their opinion, but they have a wide breadth and depth of knowledge when it comes to film. So we trust their opinion. We trust their judgment because of their experience. You are going to be writing about your opinion, but if you do it as an expert in your topic, then your opinion becomes more sound. But you do not want the piece to sound opinionated. What's the difference? Again, if something comes off as opinionated, there's usually a lot of emotion involved, right? But if something comes off as expert opinion, then yeah, it's an opinion, but it's, it's rooted in something more objective and trustworthy, right? So the key to making sure that you are approaching this in the right way um, is to think about these characteristics right here. Adequately describing your subject, establishing clear and fair criteria, asserting a logical definitive judgment, providing convincing supporting evidence, employing an impartial and reasonable tone, and adhering to a clear pattern of organization. We are gonna look at each of these individually so that you can make sure that you are achieving each of those so that your evaluation paragraph does exactly what it's supposed to do in a way that is convincing, right? So first, to the subject. You have to establish what your subject is, what your topic is in your topic sentence, right? We have learned how important a topic sentence is to a paragraph, right? So this, this even though this is a specific type of paragraph, it is still a paragraph. You still have to have a clearly focused topic sentence. So you must 
name your topic in the topic sentence. For example, if I have decided to use a restaurant as my topic, let's say the restaurant that I want to evaluate is Olive Garden, I must mention Olive Garden by name in my topic sentence. Somehow, some way, that first sentence has to make it clear what my focused topic is, what I am evaluating, right? If you feel that it is absolutely necessary, you can follow up the topic sentence with one or two sentences of background information, but one or two sentences max. Because remember, the focus of your paragraph is on the evaluation of your topic, the reasons why it's good or the reasons why it's bad. So any kind of background info you provide should not take away from that focus. So we're only writing a single paragraph right now. So that means your background information has to be limited to one or two sentences tops. In a lot of cases, you won't need to provide any background information whatsoever. If I were evaluating Olive Garden, I don't have to provide any background information on Olive Garden. I would assume that most of my readers kind of know what, what type of restaurant Olive Garden is. And if they don't, you know, they will probably figure it out by the time they finish reading my paragraph. I don't need to provide a ton of background info on this particular topic. Um, but I'm not going to say that you cannot provide any background information whatsoever because there are some topics that students choose that, you know, aren't necessarily popular among the average, you know, student population. Um, so it's good to at least give some kind of reference point, right? Um, but again, limit it, one or two sentences tops, that's it. Because, you know, most of the time you're gonna have your topic sentence and then the next sentence after that is immediately going to start discussing your first main idea. All right. So, but if you feel like the background information is necessary, limit it to one or two sentences right after the topic sentence. Okay. And make sure that topic sentence names your topic. The second important thing uh, to help you um, ensure that you're adhering to the expectations of an evaluation paragraph are your criteria. Criteria are used to establish what the ideal is. So what the ideal would be for this type of product, what the ideal would be for visiting this type of place, um, what the ideal would be for a good dining experience out at a restaurant, right? So it's, it's what I look for, it's, it's what I hope <laughs> I get, <laughs> right? So those are the specific categories that you use to evaluate your topic, right? So if my ideal for going out to dinner is, okay, good dining experience, what is it gonna require? Well, I really hope that the place is clean. I really hope the service is good. Uh, and more and most importantly, I really hope the food is good, right? Those are my ideals, those are my criteria. That's what I hope for every time I go out to eat, no matter where I go, right? I apply those criteria to my specific topic, right? Restaurants are my general topic. My specific topic is Olive Garden. So I take my, my criteria, my three ideal qualities, and apply them to Olive Garden to see whether or not Olive Garden measures up in those criteria, right? So I would say Olive Garden is a great place to dine because of their cleanliness, friendly service, and delicious food. So I've named my topic, I've named my subject, Olive Garden, and I have also clearly defined my criteria. The reasons why I think this place is so good is because of their cleanliness, friendly service, and delicious food. Those are my three criteria. Those become my main ideas 
in the paragraph, right? But because I'm using those specific criteria that could be applied to any restaurant I would go to, my judgment about Olive Garden specifically becomes more reasonable because I'm using widely accepted criteria, right? Like it would be silly to say Olive Garden is a great place to dine um, because um, my server's name was Ophelia and I love that name. That doesn't make any sense, first of all. Uh, but it's also something that is so particular that most readers are going to be like, I don't care if the server's name is Ophelia. Why would that make me want to go eat at this place? Right? You want your criteria to be widely accepted. What, you know, that enough people out there would share those ideals that they would then look at your evaluation and say, okay. They are making this judgment based on some really, you know, focused and acceptable criteria. It becomes more trustworthy and reasonable, right? And just as my little example here demonstrated, your criteria must be listed in your topic sentence. I don't want to start off and just say Olive Garden is a great place to dine. Okay, yeah, the reader knows that this paragraph should be focused on Olive Garden and why it's a great place to dine, but I want to know right away what they are considering when they make this statement. I want to know what they're looking at to make that judgment. I want to know that they are basing it on the cleanliness, the service, and the food. Now I'm going to keep reading. Okay. All right. So the next thing that you have to make sure you include is your judgment. I know it seems crazy that you know you have to be reminded. Uh, it's a review. It's an evaluation. It's all about whether or not your topic is good or bad, valuable or not, high quality, low quality. Uh, you wouldn't believe how easy it is, though, to get into this paragraph and forget <laughs> to actually make your judgment clear, right? But you have to include the judgment. You have to include whether or not your topic met your expectations in each of your criteria. Right? So using my example, right? Um, I mentioned my subject by name in my topic sentence, Olive Garden. I have my criteria in my topic sentence, clean environment, friendly service, delicious food. I also have my judgment in that topic sentence. Olive Garden is a great place to dine. That right there lets my reader know that I am giving this a positive evaluation. My judgment of Olive Garden based on these three criteria is a positive one. So your judgment also has to be included in your topic sentence. So that's three things that you have to make sure you accomplish in the very first sentence of your evaluation paragraph. You have to make your topic crystal clear. You need to make your judgment crystal clear and you need to list your specific criteria. The magic number is usually three, but I've, I've had students submit paragraphs where they have had four, sometimes even five criteria for their topic. Um, I would say, you know, going up more than four does tend to make the paragraph go a little on the longer side. If you only have two criteria, if you have a lot to say about both of them, you could get away with only two criteria. But you better make sure that you are spending a lot of time explaining, giving examples for both of them. And again, the magic number is three, four is okay, right? Anything less or more, not gonna be as easy to do well, right? But topic sentence, very first sentence, topic, judgment, criteria, right? 
Then, of course, we need the evidence, right? So far, those three things that we've learned about all come in the topic sentence. It's only one sentence of the paragraph. What do we do in the rest of it, right? The rest of it is devoted to your evidence, right? I have to provide examples of how my topic does or does not measure up in my criteria, right? I, so if, you know, my judgment on Olive Garden is that it's a great place to eat because they're clean, they have friendly service, and they have delicious food, I have to support all of that with a variety of evidence to show how my judgment was reached. I need to describe the cleanliness. I need to describe the friendly service. I need to describe the delicious food in a way that will convince the reader that they should dine at Olive Garden too, right? So generally each section of an evaluation paragraph is going to focus on the author's judgment for one criteria by including a variety of evidence of support. So I have my topic sentence, right? After my topic sentence, I would then start discussing Olive Garden's clean environment. I would provide specific examples based on my personal experience of how Olive Garden is always clean. I might talk about how the parking lot is clean. I might talk about how the floors are always clean, how the tableware is always clean, how the bathrooms are clean, right? I would provide specific examples based on my experience. After I get finished describing how clean the, the environment is, then I would switch and start discussing how friendly the service is. And again, using specific examples based on my experience, how they greet you when you come in the door, how the server was friendly, how they offered to do this, how they were willing to explain that, how the manager stopped by. You just, whatever, whatever the case may be, whatever it is in my opinion, based on my experience that makes me say, this place has great, friendly service. I'm going to share those examples with my reader in that section on service. After I get finished saying everything I need to say about the friendly service, then I'm going to switch to start talking about the food. And I'm going to give specific examples of how the food is so delicious, right? I might talk about the unlimited salad and breadsticks. I might talk about one or two different entrees that I've tried. I might talk about a dessert that I've had. And I'm going to give, I'm going to be as detailed as I can without going like way overboard, of course. Um, but I'm going to not, I'm not just going to say there's, there, there's salads, entrees, and desserts are tasty. It doesn't really help. I'm going to name some of the specific items, and I'm going to try to describe them as much as I can. Okay. My final sentence of the paragraph is then going to make a recommendation to the reader. Based on all of this evidence I have just provided you of how Olive Garden measures up in my criteria, which was clean environment, friendly service, delicious food, I encourage you to go try Olive Garden if you have never been there, right? All of that is taking place, all of this right here, right? Everything right, whoops. Everything right here is taking place in one single paragraph, okay? For the purposes of this assignment, we are only writing a single paragraph. So you want to get to the heart of your examples quickly. You don't want to waste a whole lot of time uh, like with filler and fluff getting to your examples. In that section on cleanliness, you want to get to the heart of the matter right away. In that section on service, get to the heart of the matter right away. Same thing for the food, because this is one single paragraph. So you're writing, you got to find that balance between, you know, I don't want my paragraph to be two pages long because I've provided too much support, but I, I don't want to run the risk of it being really short and not providing enough support. 
And I'm going to give you some sort of guidelines here in just a few minutes uh, in terms of your supporting examples, right? But just keep in mind that this all happens in one paragraph. And notice when I described it to you after my topic sentence, I would talk about the clean environment. Well, the reason I'm talking about the clean environment first is because in my topic sentence, I listed clean environment first. Right over here, I said that after I finished discussing the clean environment, I would then go on to discuss fair friendly service. Well, the reason I'm discussing the service next is because that's what I listed next in my topic sentence. Same thing, I listed the food last in my topic sentence. So the food is the last thing I'm going to discuss. And then I'm going to make my recommendation. All right. Okay. Now, another thing we need to uh, talk about real quick is how to make sure you have an appropriate tone in this type of writing. Um, you want to keep two things in mind, reasonable versus emotional and business casual versus unprofessional, right? Let's look at reason versus emotional. No matter how much you love your topic, you still want your tone to remain somewhat objective. At the very least, you do not want to go overboard with your emotional attachment to the topic. Yes, it's okay to, to sound excited and enthusiastic about your topic, but if, if, if it is just overboard, it's going to go too far. Likewise, if you're doing a negative review, like let's say, you know, uh, I was giving a negative review to Olive Garden. I I don't I don't want it to um, I don't want to start bashing the place. I don't want it to turn into a rant, right? Um, because if if either way, if if you have too much emotion, it's likely going to turn the reader off. You actually become less trustworthy. If I am gushing about this place. Then people are like, I don't know, that seems, I'm not sure. Um, really? Like, it's that great? There's absolutely nothing wrong with it? The fact that you are so over the top about this makes me think that, um, you know, maybe this was your first time at a restaurant ever. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Or if they're just bashing it, then, then the reader's like, I feel like there's a lot more going on here and I really don't know that I trust you that this place was really all that bad because you seem to just be angry about something else uh I don't know if it you know if one of the servers said something rude to you or if you were just having a bad day before you even walked through their doors I don't know going too much one way or the other can ruin the review Humor is acceptable, but again, you don't want to go overboard with that either. And you don't want to be too flippant. Um, you don't want to be too um, snarky. Uh, and you don't want to be inappropriate. Humor is one of those things you kind of walk a fine line with it sometimes. Um, you know, but you you it can be included to a certain extent. Um, but you know, what looks more professional? Something that is uh, an over-the-top love fest a closed-minded attack, uh, something that is just aiming to be funny every other sentence, or an objective analysis that is taken one step at a time using specific criteria with detailed examples and explanation that, you know, clearly indicate the author's point of view, but aren't going overboard. That's what you want to strive for. Now, the other part of your tone has to come from whether or not you're being professional enough because you are going to be choosing a topic that you either really enjoy something that's fun or something that's personal to you. And you don't want to let that familiarity with your topic lead you down the road of writing in a way that is more like something you find on social media or how you would speak to your friends. But you don't want to be like 
super stuffy and formal either because these topics are fun and enjoyable and personal to you. So you want to remain friendly, but professional. And I always tell students, think business casual, right? So, you know, um, co-workers, classmates in the classroom, not how you necessarily relate to your classmates and co-workers on break or at lunch or at happy hour, <laughs> but how you communicate with each other on the job, right? That is the kind of tone you want to take when you write this paragraph. And that can take a little bit of, you know, really keeping it in your head and remembering because again, a lot of your topics that you're going to choose, you guys are going to be really excited about them and you're going to want to share your thoughts about these topics. And again, it can lead you to just be a little too unprofessional, a little too informal. Um, so you do want to make sure that you know, you're not going too far one way or the other. You're staying sort of um, just an appropriate tone in the classroom. All right. Now, the last thing, organizing the paragraph. This is worth a good bit of points on the rubric that I'll use to grade your evaluation paragraph, how you have organized, how you have created coherence. Because remember, the first aspect of coherence is that the ideas are organized in a logical way. There really shouldn't be any guesswork to this, um, but sometimes there is. So let's go through this, right? Your topic sentence, very first sentence of your paragraph. We have already learned that a topic sentence has to introduce the, the, the main focus of the paragraph. In this case, for an evaluation paragraph, your main focus is your subject, your judgment, and your criteria. All three of those need to be present in your topic sentence. The rest of the paragraph will be your support sentence. Whichever criteria you listed first should be discussed first. Aim for three to four sentences of supporting evidence to explain your first criteria. So in my paragraph about Olive Garden, my first criteria that I listed in the topic sentence was the cleanliness. So that's what I'm going to discuss first in the next, you know, right after the topic sentence. And I am going to provide three to four sentences of specific examples that explain the cleanliness at Olive Garden. Then I'm going to move on and talk about my second criteria that I listed, which was the service. And I'm going to provide three to four sentences of specific examples relating to how good the service was. Then I'm going to move on to the third criteria I listed in my topic sentence, which was the food, and I'm going to provide three to four sentences of specific examples explaining how tasty the food is. Right? And I want transitions from one criteria to the next in my paragraph. I want to say the first thing that makes Olive Garden a great place to eat is the cleanliness. And I'm going to give my three to four sentences of examples. In addition to the cleanliness, Olive Garden also provides friendly service. And I'm going to give my three to four sentences explaining how good the service is. Finally, probably my favorite reason uh, I love going to Olive Garden is their delicious food. And then I'm going to provide my three to four examples of their food. And then I'm going to end with my point sentence, my concluding sentence. The last sentence of my paragraph will remind my readers of my subject, remind them of my judgment, remind them of my criteria, and leave them with some sort of expert advice or recommendation. All right? This is your organization. Your criteria determine your organization. However you list them in your topic sentence, that determines how the rest of your paragraph develops. You get to choose the order. I happen to think food is the most important thing about a restaurant when I go. That's what I'm most what I'm there for the most. So I discussed that last. Remember, we want to save our best or most important main idea for, for last, because that's what the readers will remember the most. Right? Service is my next big thing, right? 
I guess, you know, if it was a really, really, really nasty, unclean restaurant, then the cleanliness would trump everything else. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I like to just give restaurants the benefit of the doubt when I go in and think, okay, it's going to be clean. Uh, it's not going to be nasty. Um, and therefore, I'm more interested in the food uh, and then the service, then the cleanliness. If you happen to think that service is really what makes or breaks a restaurant experience for you, then talk about the service last. It's totally up to you. Or if you're using a different type of topic entirely, it doesn't have to be a restaurant. You get to determine the order in which you want to discuss your criteria. But you have to make sure that the order you list them in the topic sentence is the same order you discuss them in in the rest of the paragraph. Okay? Don't mix it all up. And in the body of the paragraph, once I'm done talking about the cleanliness at Olive Garden, at no other point in the paragraph of, am I going to mention something else about the cleanliness? No, anything having to do with the cleanliness belongs up in that section. Nowhere else, right? You don't want to keep flip-flopping back and forth, you know? Criteria determine the organization. Three to four sentences of supporting examples for each criteria. Then you're concluding sentence, right? Okay. Let's take a look at a few examples. All right. One second here. Okay. So what we have here is a restaurant review. It is a review of uh, a place called Chili Pie. Okay. So again, I want you to think about all the things we just talked about. What belongs in the topic sentence? Right. How to organize it? How to provide the evidence? How to end it? Right. Chili Time, located in St. Bernard, has all the ingredients of an extraordinary restaurant due to their convenient hours of operation, delicious food, and friendly staff. The first noticeably wonderful quality about Chili Time is their hours of operation. Chili Time is open from 6 a.m. to 4 a.m. every day of the week except Sundays when they open five hours later at 9 a.m. That means for the majority of the week, they are only closed for two hours. With such extensive hours, a customer with even the busiest or oddest schedule will have the opportunity to visit and eat a meal inside the restaurant at a spacious table or comfy booth. And the food you finally choose to order at Chili Time will always be delicious. I know I can't seem to get enough of it. I almost always order their chili cheese fries and the Time Burger, a meal that is sure to satisfy even the biggest of appetites. While the delicious food certainly makes Chili Time a crowd pleaser, Chili Time just wouldn't be Chili Time without the help of their friendly and efficient staff members, most of whom have been working there for years and know my order before I even sit down. But don't worry, if you're not yet a regular, the staff here is always warm and inviting to new customers as well. You will truly feel like welcomed family once you enter the doors of Chili Time. If you have never been to Chili Time, then what are you waiting for? Notice, topic sentence, Chili Time has all the ingredients of an extraordinary restaurant, judgment, due to their convenient hours of operation, delicious food, and friendly staff, criteria. The first criteria mentioned was convenient hours of operation, and that is the first one that's discussed in the rest of the paragraph. The first noticeably wonderful quality about Chili Time is their hours of operation, right? We had a transition here too to let us know that after the topic sentence, we are immediately beginning to discuss the first main idea, the first noticeably wonderful quality. She gave us a few sentences to explain what she means by convenient hours of operation and why that makes it such a great place to go, right? And the food you finally choose to order at Chili Time will always be delicious. So, and let us know we were moving on. Food, that was what she listed second in her topic sentence. That's what she's discussing second, right? Friendly staff, right? Chili time just wouldn't be chili time with the, uh, without the help of their friendly and efficient staff members. So she did exactly what she was supposed to do with this paragraph. Some of the supporting examples could have been a little more specific. Like I, I think I told her in the feedback, I'd love to 
hear a little more description about the chili cheese fries and the time burger. Um, but for the most part, this was, you know, this is definitely a quality paragraph, meaning like got received a grade of an A. <laughs> Maybe not a hundred percent, but definitely a 90 or above. It does exactly what an evaluation paragraph is supposed to do. All right. We also have a movie review. I put this up here because it's one of your uh, journal prompts and some students really enjoy doing this, their evaluation paragraph on either a movie or a TV show. But I will say right away, pay attention to this one and notice how he gives us very specific reasons why Halloween is such a great movie, but never once does he reveal anything about the plot. That's important. So keep that in mind. If you are leaning towards doing a movie review or a TV show review, you have to remember you are not allowed to talk about the plot because then you're giving spoilers away and your reader won't want to go watch it. Remember, that's the whole reason you're writing the evaluation paragraph is to make a recommendation to your reader. And if you have spoiled it for them, then they're not going to want to go watch it. So take a, take a lesson here to how much he, how much information he provides about this movie without telling us about the movie. All right. With the use of great acting, suspense, and one hell of an antagonist, Halloween is undoubtedly the greatest horror movie yet. Topic, Halloween, judgment, greatest horror movie yet, criteria, great acting, suspense, and antagonist. The first aspect of Halloween that makes it such a terrific film is the acting. Jamie Lee Curtis does an excellent job playing Laurie Strode, the typical girl next door, who is oblivious to the fact that an escaped psychopath is stalking her. Furthermore, Donald Pleasant's portrayal of Dr. Sam Loomis is spectacular, especially how he reacts to the villain throughout the movie. In addition to superb acting, another key factor to the greatness of Halloween is the suspense. The kills throughout the movie come slow and give the viewer time to wonder where the killer is and when he'll pop out. When he does finally show up, the scare is all the more terrifying. Yet, even with the great acting and suspenseful scenes, no horror movie can ever be a good horror movie without an outstanding antagonist. And Halloween has the best antagonist in Michael Myers. The silence and calmness of this villain added to his terror tenfold. He did not chase victims, he stalked them. And the audience was along for the ride. His mask is undoubtedly the scariest part about him because the blank, pale, emotionless mask enabled audiences to cast their own personal fears on him. What could be more terrifying than one's own imagination? Indeed, all of these elements combined have helped Halloween stand the test of time and go down in history as one of the best horror films ever made. He gave us specific examples of the acting. He gave us you know, a specific explanation about the suspense. And he gave us a very specific explanation about the antagonist, all showing us how those three elements help make this movie so fantastic. But at no point do we really ever get told what the movie is about. Okay, yeah, we know that Laurie Strode gets stalked by a psychopath, but I, you know, uh, we don't don't even know. It still doesn't give anything away. But he is still able to convince me that this movie is one that I should see simply because of the acting, the suspense, and the antagonist. You know, uh, I'll, I'll figure out soon enough what the movie is actually about once I start watching it, but he's already got me to a point where I'm like, yeah, this, you know, uh, hopefully the plot measures up to these other elements that he says make it so good. But I'm convinced, you know, I, I'm convinced that this is going to be a good movie. So you have to keep that in mind. If you decide to use a movie or a TV show as your topic, you cannot reveal too much, right? Okay. This is another topic.
topic that you have been asked to write on informally at this point, but it could be a topic that you can use here for the evaluation paragraph, and it's a vacation spot. All right, so here we have a review of the Great Smoky Mountains. The Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee is the have it all vacation spot due to the location, family friendly environment, and its colorful history. The Smokies are perfect for anyone looking for a mountain getaway. The first appealing aspect of the Smoky Mountains is, of course, the location. Located just minutes away from Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg, you can book a hotel or cabin as isolated from others or as close to the city as you'd like. Being in the mountains means you can enjoy beautiful scenery year round. Secondly, the family friendly environment makes this vacation spot enjoyable for everyone. There are a multitude of activities within 25 minutes of the Smoky Mountains. In Pigeon Forge, you will find fun for the whole family at Dollywood, outdoor go kart attractions, tons of museums and amusement parks. And right next door in Gatlinburg, you can enjoy a trip to Ripley's Aquarium of the Smokies. To top off a great vacation spot, you will also be able to learn about the rich and colorful history of the beautiful Smoky Mountains. You can stop by the Sugarland Visitor Center right in Gatlinburg, or there are other three, there are three other locations throughout the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Each location will provide a unique perspective on the history of this beautiful area. For example, you might learn the Smokies are believed to be some of the oldest mountains on earth, but they are still so full of life. Don't you hear them calling your name? Book your next vacation at the Smoky Mountains. You won't regret it. Look at the topic center. Is the subject name? Yep, Great Smoky Mountains. Is the judgment revealed? Have it all vacation spot. Are the criteria revealed? Yep, location, family friendly environment, colorful history. Does she go in order? Yep. Does she provide transitions from one idea to the next? Yeah, the first appealing aspect. Secondly, the family friendly environment. Right? Um, to top off a great vacation spot, indicating we're at the final criteria. She gives specific examples. She ends it with her recommendation. Again, yeah, exactly what an evaluation paragraph is supposed to do. One more example to look at. And it's a video game review, Mario Brothers. Okay. Mario Brothers for the Nintendo 64 is the best video game for people of all ages because of its presentation, graphics, and gameplay. To begin, the presentation Nintendo has achieved with Mario Brothers is simplistic and to the point. The menus are text only, with the only color being put into the game's title. While this might make the menus seem bland in comparison, this is outweighed by their easily navigated functionality. Mario Brothers graphics are equally good. Mario, the main character, actually looks like a real life person. A person can see his, a player can see his own, see his blue overalls, his red shirt, and even his mustache. The world in which Mario lives is very vibrant, except for the castle dungeons, and the enemies are creatively put together. And while the presentation and graphics are great, the gameplay is what really defines Mario Brothers. Mario can run, jump, and shoot fireballs. It's basic, but it does it well. Much of the game involves jumping very precisely to far ledges and maneuvering past enemy obstacles. The best part is when Mario finds a star power-up. It temporarily makes Mario invincible, and enemies will die if Mario touches them. Running through a, a level on star power is an experience beyond words. Indeed, Nintendo's Mario Brothers has set a new standard for platform gaming. Why wait? Go buy it now. You know, now, whether or not it's dated, uh, you know, but I think, you know, the whole idea of this was choosing a game because they're saying it's the best video game for people of all ages. So I don't know that this even that this author would would say, no, it's it's the best video game ever. I don't think that's what they were going for here. They were going for the best video game for people of all ages. Anyone in the family can play from a youngster up to grandma and grandpa, right? And they do a pretty good job of explaining the three reasons why it is a great game for people of all ages. And it does exactly what an evaluation paragraph is supposed to do. All of these examples, right? They did exactly 
you know, they understood the assignment. So you want to start thinking of your subject, your topic, right? The possibilities are nearly endless, but remember you have already written several informal evaluation paragraphs. You did a restaurant review in one of our discussions. You did a movie review in one of the journals. You did a store or shopping review in a journal. You did a vacation spot review in a discussion. That's four topics that you have already written about that would be appropriate topics for this assignment. Now, you do not have to use one of those four. There are tons of other options out there. However, wouldn't it be cool if you could take the ideas that you already have written down for one of these four and use those instead of starting from scratch with a brand new topic? Again, if, 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 if you want to choose another type of topic, you absolutely can. And in the um, assignment instructions for writing assignment one, I will go over some additional topic choices and, and, and what to do if nothing on my list appeals to you. Um, but really think, consider the usefulness of going back to one of those assignments you've already completed. And granted, it was in a very informal way. But if my feedback on those items says, hey, this would make a good topic for writing assignment one evaluation paragraph. You got some really good ideas to work with here. You should consider using this. Well, then maybe you should consider using it. And some of the work's already done for you, right? So just something to think about. Um, but again, in the instructions for the actual assignment, you know, uh, we I go into more about potential topics. But once you decide what topic you're going to write about, then you got to decide on your criteria. Okay, I'm going to do a restaurant review. What are the three things I look for in a good dining experience? I'm going to do a vacation spot review. What are the three things I look for in a good vacation spot? If I'm going to review, um, let's see, how about a car? What are the three things I look for in a good car, in a good vehicle? Um, what are the three things I look for in a good pair of shoes? What are the three things I look for in a good gym, right? What are the three things I look for in a good um, church? Again, possibilities are endless, but you have to come up with your criteria before you get too far into this process. What are the three things I look for in a good blank? You fill in those blanks. Those are your criteria. That is what you will use to evaluate the topic you've chosen. Create your topic sentence next. Remember, it has to include your subject, it has to include your judgment, and it has to include your criteria. Then, Start thinking of specific examples that you can use for each of those criteria, right? Um, make sure that you're using examples that show, like if you're giving your topic a positive evaluation, make sure your examples show it in a positive light. If you're giving your topic a negative review, make sure the examples you're using relate to how it's negative, right? Um, and end your paragraph with a recommendation or warning for your reader. Don't forget about the reader, right? Come back to this PowerPoint if you start to lose your way while you're working on writing assignment one. Come back to not only the slides that explain the expectations, but also the sample evaluation paragraph. Because no matter what type of topic you choose, those four sample paragraphs are still 
going to be a good guideline for you. You still want to construct a topic sentence like each of them did. You still want to organize the paragraph like they did. You still want to provide the same amount and type of examples that they did. You still want to end the paragraph like they did. It's still a great um, example to come back to, even if you're not doing a restaurant review or a movie review or a vacation spot review or a video game review. It doesn't matter. Those four sample paragraphs are still great ways for you to check to make sure you're doing your paragraph the right way. Okay. All right. So be sure, um, be sure to watch the video in the assignment instructions for writing assignment one evaluation paragraph, um, just to make sure that you are fully aware of everything that is expected of you. Now, you know, this lesson is, is, is all about how to, how to do an evaluation paragraph. Yes. But you want to make sure that you are watching the instruction video so that you can hear all of the specific requirements for this assignment as a whole, right? Because there's still other things to take into consideration besides just, did I have my judgment and my criteria? You know, there's still some other things you gotta pay attention to, okay? All right, if you have questions about any of this, um, please reach out because I really, the, the, the better you do on this assignment the first time around, the less likely it is that you'll have to worry about it after the fact and having to revise it. So I'm here to answer any questions, help any way I can to make sure that you guys are producing paragraphs that are good to go the first time around. Okay, please don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, you guys are free to go ahead and move on to the next item.